Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the Wasa Homes pregame show. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Will Starwald as we get set to bring you more Maryville hockey here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Will, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. I uh, forgot how cold it was in this place. You know, got used to the warm weather after it was, you know, zero outside. <laughs> it was pretty cold. Hopefully tonight's going to be a barn burner as last night the Saints lost three to one against the McKendry Bearcats tonight. They take them on once again, their fourth game of the season. They're two and one on the season against the Bearcats and they're looking for that third win. Unfortunately, last night they had the early lead in the first period, three straight goals for the Bearcats and the McKendry, or McKendry took home the victory. Yeah, McKendry, uh, once they kind of, they got the momentum, they got that goal back and then they just kept their foot on the gas and they just kept going and going and going. And Maryville needs to look to turn that around here early, get another early lead, and then with that shortened bench, make sure that Boyley doesn't take too many shots on early. And we'll get into the starting lineups here soon with that shortened bench because the Saints will be down one forward. They're going with 11 forwards tonight, so that will be one of the uh, things to look out for for the Saints. But this series in particular is very important because these teams are neck and neck in the ACHA rankings and as we know, actually for the people that are watching, they may not know that the MCH just recently announced that the conference tournament has been canceled. So what they said is that whoever is the highest ranking team in the ACHA by the end of the year will be that automatic qualifier for the MCH, which is huge because at this point, it's Maryville and McKendry who are neck and neck. Maryville ranked 13th, McKendry 14. So you have to think this series is huge. Yeah, that just puts a little more pressure on these games. They were already, you know, going to be close with the rankings being as close as they were and thinking how everything turned out. But now when there's only one spot, it's everybody's going to tr- – any given day. And we, we do a podcast every week, and I, I even said, hey, let's just play against McKendry the rest of the year because by the end of it, it's going to be one of these two teams. But everything starts tonight. You had the loss last night. you got to get over it and bounce back. We'll see how the Saints fare tonight. Let's get into the starting lineup as we get set for this game. In net tonight will be the freshman from Quebec, Dominic Boyley. Dominic Boyley comes in. He has three games under his belt in his freshman campaign of four goals against average and an 880 save percentage. He's a, he's a terrific goalie, but let's keep going. On the back end, we have Trevor Henson. And Matt Edgecombe. And up top, that first line with Anthony Stavro, Jaden Bexty, and TJ Prexler looking to get things going for the Saints tonight. It should be a fun one here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Will, this is a big game. What are you expecting from the Saints tonight? Well, I'm expecting them to come out fast. You know, the coach is going to say, John Hogan's going to say, Look, we're down a guy, that doesn't matter. We still got to play our game, play exactly how we're going to play against them before. We've beaten them before. Yesterday might have been a fluke. The puck bounces a different way every night. But I'm looking for a big game for Dominic Boyley because he's the anchor back there. If he stops a lot of shots, that just keeps the momentum on Maryville's side, and that's going to be a big part of the game tonight, I think. Absolutely. Good teams. Everything starts from the back end, starts in the crease. We'll see if Dominic Boyley can come up big in tonight's game. We'll be back before puck drop. Me and my partner, Corey Madden, getting things set here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Don't go anywhere. Saints Hockey is coming your way. Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three step building process so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes we build your way with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. There's a super fun city, a quick getaway, where there's so much excitement, you need more than a day. St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun, so much fun for your family, infinity plus a ton. It's got works of wonder, things to wow your brain, an amazing cat performance all aboard all the trains. Some museums are historic, some hit the red blue note, maybe catch a cards game whenever paddles your boat. Yeah, St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun. Visit us at explorestlouis.com for your chance to win a weekend of non-stop fun. Look, sport might not be the answer right now, but it teaches us this, that impossible challenges must be faced 
and overcome. And the reward is joy. And it will always be that way. And now that sport is back, don't waste these chances. Play with more heart, even more fire, and hope that does not end. Seek out what scares you and let your body do what it loves. Nobody knows what the future holds. Nobody knows what will come our way. So honor every breath and respect every chance. Opportunities will come and we must be ready. This is a message for those who want to get a degree online on top of everything going on in their lives. Here at Maryville University, we think you're brave. For nearly 150 years, we've been bravely disrupting higher education by putting students first. And now we're bringing this high quality education online. An education developed alongside the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner for tonight, Corey Madden, as we get set for puck drop here at the Maryville Saints Hockey Network, actually at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm excited. We're finally back at home. It's been a while since we've had a home game. It's been a while since this team has played. We played their first game last night at McKendree. It's been a couple weeks, but hey, we're back here. I'm excited. What are we looking for tonight? We have three keys to the game and a couple players to watch for. Yeah, I'm just excited to be back at the rink and, and hockey to start again. I know it's uh, a COVID season and everything's crazy, but, uh, you know, it's hard to get a flow in the season, and that last two-, three-week break really uh, kind of threw everything off, but I'm excited to be back at it. So we have a couple things we want to touch on before tonight's game. This team in particular, they come in 4-5. and five. They lost last night 3-1 to one against the McKendree Bearcats. They get another crack at them tonight on home ice. What does this team have to do in order to win tonight? Uh, I, I think that they need to have a short memory and forget last night and uh, just keep, keep going. You know, we had a short bench last night. We're missing a player today. We'll talk about that in the keys. Uh, but, you know, we just we got to play Maryville hockey. And you said the keys of the game, pedal to the metal. This team, they came out to an early start. They did. They were up 1-0 in the first period, and they let three unanswered goals go in the back of the net, something that you cannot have tonight, especially if you're looking to jump on top and win tonight's game. But that's one of the things that they got to they gotta uh, you know pick up tonight and not let McKendry get any offensive zone uh, momentum. Yeah, the second key to the game is uh, we need to get everything we can. We can't play in the zone. we got to get out of our offensive zone. We had a short bench last night. We are missing a player tonight, so we got to got to play smart in our defensive zone. Yeah, and we've seen in this first half, if you want to call it the first half of the season, because of this long break that we have had, the Saints have have, have had. But uh, you know, we a lot of defensive miscues we've seen that have turned into uh, goals for the other team, and so one of the things that they need to work on, and and we touched upon it, is just get the puck out of the zone, like you just said, just get it out. Because when you do have a short bench like they do have tonight, you can get legs out there for a little bit too long, and, hey, puck might end up in the back of your own net. Uh, and then the third key of the game is play physical, but play smart. Talked about the bench the last two games. Uh, we have to play physical, but we, we can't end up in the box and put our teams in the penalty kill and then burn ourselves out. So that's a huge key. 
Absolutely. Well, let's touch on a couple players that we want to look out for. One in particular, Christian Alvagran. He's been having a great season. Corey, what do you have on him? So, yeah, when talking to the coaches about Christian Alvagran, they love to bring up his speed and how fast he is. But he's also got a great 200-foot game. And then his offense. He had six goals in that Missouri State series, and he's great on the power play. So if Christian can play great today, I think Maryville comes away with a win. Absolutely. And not only do they have to be great on the offensive end, they got to be great on the back end as well. And this team has three outstanding goaltenders. We've seen it all year. The one who gets to start today is the freshman, Dominic Boyley. What are you seeing from him? Um, I love how he moves the puck. He's a great goaltender. He plays smart, good, good angles. But when he moves the puck, he can create offensive chances. And that's also defensive chance. He plays defense, too, when, you, yeah. when you, you can play the puck as well as he does. So I love how he plays, plays the puck. That's my favorite thing about him. Um, what, what do you think about him? Well, no, I completely agree with you, and we've mentioned it multiple times on the broadcast before. When you have a goaltender that can come out of his net and play the puck as well as he does, you can catch a team napping. If they're trying to have a wholesale change, you can get – an offensive zone opportunity, you get an odd man break, and hey, that could be the difference in the hockey game. For sure. Yep. I, mean, I, I, I love watching him play, to be honest with you. A lot of, uh, of storylines tonight. It should be a fun one. Don't go anywhere. We have Puck Drop coming your way here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. We'll be right back with more Maryville Saints hockey. This is a message for those who want to try to get a degree but didn't, who faced their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. By now, you guys probably know there's a lot to see and do in St. Louis. But when it comes to the art scene, there's more here than meets the eye. From Laumeyer Sculpture Park and the City Garden to the stunning Cathedral Basilica, one of the largest mosaic collections in the entire world. So if art is your thing, St. Louis is on display all year long. Ooh, now that's an exhibit. St. Lou is always exploring. Trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and bad and all around. The more things I lost, the more I found. One thing I taught myself to do, no matter the problem, refuse to lose. So, how you want it, man? You can choose. If you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse. See, I walk in slow and ignite the room. Like fire, everything I touch, I consume. I'm getting up while y'all just snooze. While you make breakfast, man, I'm on the move. I'm the first one in and the last one out. Whoever owns the place gotta drag me out ah. in me i trust see i smell like success this elon musk huh? everybody wanna be like us we don't stop because the top just ain't enough huh? came here ready to fight on this night you better just fight for your life
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner, Corey Madden, as we get set for tonight's tilt between the Maryville Saints and the McKendree Bearcats. These teams meeting for the fourth time this season. Maryville has the upper edge. Two wins to Maryville's or to McKendree's one win. And McKendree got that win last night on home ice. However, Maryville has the opportunity to respond on their home ice as well. Corey, how are you doing tonight? We're finally back. We just talked about it, but things are going here. We got Mc McKendree in purple and Maryville in white. Are you excited? Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. Let's uh, this, these two teams have battled hard all season, so I'm excited. Here we go. Maryville wins the draw. McKendry with possession. They chip it in deep. Trevor Henson back behind the net. He throws it around the boards. It's intercepted. Comes up to the half wall. The Saints able to come out of their zone. Unable to make the connection with the pass as McKendry has the puck in their own zone behind the cage. McKendry breaking out of their own zone. Fires one off the glass. It goes down deep into the Saints' territory as the puck comes up to the half wall. Goes under a stick. And Norlander's there for the Bearcats. They go D to D. Flying into the boards was Matt Edgecombe. Able to take it out of the zone is Kyle Henson. Or Trevor Henson. Henson dumps it in deep. McKendry able to come up with it. Trying to avoid the too many men call as they had a couple players changing. That pass is intercepted. Cole Bonnet try to get it out. It's sent back in deep. With it now are the Saints. Alvagram, we touched on him earlier in the pregame show. Someone to look out for is that pass. Goes off the stick. Cole Mudra, he saw his first game last night. He's back in the lineup. He had a point in his first game. One assist as Cole Bonnet will send it in deep. Speaking of Cole Bonnet, his uh, jersey's looking a little heavier tonight. He's got the A up there. Oh, yeah. Love to see it. This team in Maryville, they have some great players that have great leadership. And that starts up top. And as that pass, or that shot, goes into the netting, and starts with Jack Harrison, the captain. I mean, that kid loves blocking shots, and he does it all around. Not only does he show his leadership off the ice, but on the ice. You love a player that is willing to step in front of the puck when it's coming your way towards the goalie, laying the body out, doing his job. As Joey Gagan looks to take the draw, he wins it. Yeah, Jack Harrison is is he is a great captain, and you can watch him after the plays, and he'll you know he'll talk to his guys and, and commanding the troops. So it's, you know, here we go. Gag into the slot. Jake Charche goes into the corner. Shot on that one's off the side of the net. McKendry comes out with it. Puck still inside their own blue line. They go D to D. They hit the red and dump it in. There's Dominic Boyley, the starter for the Saints. Kemmer, he passes one over to Nate Simpson as he will fling it out of play with 17-24 left to go here in the first period. Only one shot on net so far in this game. Looks like both teams trying to find their game so far. Little whiff right there. Is that puck? Shot into the netting once again. So some quick whistles early on here in this game. It's kind of hard to get a flow going as there's a little extracurricular activity after the whistle. Hmm. Scrum taking the face off, going up against Jaden Bexty. Scrum wins the draw. Shot on. That one sticked away into the corner. Brad Boudreaux's there. He's able to get it out. Damian Karenji now hits the blue line. Bexty flying towards the front of the net. Goes into the corner. Bexty cycles with Karenji. Karenji behind the cage. So Bexty shot on, and that one is off the pad. 
Great opportunity for the Saints to make it a one nothing game. We saw them tack on the first goal in last night's affair. Comes out to the point, Henson. Henson throws one just wide of the net. McKendry able to possess the puck as they will settle things down in their own zone as they set up shot behind their own cage. That pass is off the stick. Henson back for it. Henson battling with it. One hand on his stick. He pokes it forward. There's Jack Harrison, the captain. Harrison pokes it two on one. Stavro, his pass goes into the sliding defense. Maryville showing their speed early as that puck goes around the boards. Prexler, he's bumped off the puck. McKendry able to exit their zone. Kirill Proskurin unable to gain entry into the Maryville zone. McKendry having a hard time coming out of their own zone, getting past the red line as Maryville has been shutting things down early. And McKendry's just going to send one down the ice for an icing with 15.38 left to play here in the first period. Yeah, we talked about it in our keys of the game. You know, putting our putting the foot, you know, more, Pedal to the metal. Pedal to the yeah, metal. Pedal to the metal. So Maryville's doing a great job of keeping the pressure in the offensive zone. And we gotta we gotta keep that up. That shot from the blue line off the skate. Cole Mudra trying to keep it in the zone. He can't. Here's Sokoff. He loses his handle of the puck. Christian Alvagran able to get it. With speed on his backhand. Cuts to the middle. Loses the puck. Gagan, the centerman. He loses it. Goes off the glass. It's kept in by Bonnet. Bonnet on his forehand, he's brushed off the puck. Stretch pass to Brown, un unable to connect. That would have been a huge breakaway opportunity for the McKendry Bearcats as that pass is an errant one. And Dominic Boyley is there to smother it with 15.08 left to go here in the first period. Corey, that scared me there for a second. Yeah, one thing McKendry likes to do is they kind of kind of play with the cherry picker up top a yeah. little bit. So we got to be careful on that one. Simpson around the net. Feeds one over to Kemmer. The breakout pass goes off his stick, stays in the zone. Kemmer's there to just chip it out as Ryan Radke will take the puck inside his own blue line, throw it off of Richardson's stick, and it goes down into the Maryville zone. Simpson almost lost it in front of his own net. Kemmer's there to backhand it. It doesn't come out of the zone. It stays in. Simpson back for it behind his own cage. He'll float one off the boards. Charche's there. Simpson with it again behind his own net. The breakout pass, a sauce pass. Charche able to gain possession. He's inside the blue line. Feeds it to Bexty. Bexty whiffs on the shot, tries to get it out front. It's picked up by Radke as he floats one to the blue line. Kept in by Edgecombe. Edgecombe the shot, and a nice save. Comes loose into the corner. Pluto, he'll flip it out of the zone. Shane Pluto, a player to watch out for for the McKendry Bearcats. A shot on, a nice pad save by the starting goaltender, Wesley Werner. Comes up to the red line. McKendry trying to flip it in. It hits off a body. It finally goes down in deep. Back forward is Henson. He's unable to get it. And the whistle blows with 13.47. Oh, that's off. Well, that's no surprise there as that has been a reoccurring nightmare, if you want to call it, for this Maryville team. More so for us because it just seems like it happens all the time. As Maryville wins the defensive zone draw, Edgecombe's there behind his own net. Edgecombe surveys the ice. Sauce pass goes off the stick. Prexler in on the forecheck. Back for it is Ryan Reeder. And the whistle's blown. Lots of pucks going up into the netting today, Corey. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I'd say it's hard. It's I had a really good flow of the game so far, but, yeah. I, you know, there's, what, four or five that's been chipped out? Lots of early whistles. It, it is hard to establish some flow to the game when there's a bunch of whistles early on. But it seems so far that the Maryville Saints have had a lot of speed Probably the most speed that I think we've seen, at least calling these games. Uh, it seems like a different team since what we saw in the first half. 
Here's a two-on-one opportunity. Lundquist comes in, a shot. That one's wide. Comes up to the red line off a skate. Back into the Saint zone. Edgecombs there, makes a move at his own blue line. Feeds it to Prexler. Prexler will chip it in. Back for it is Richardson. <laughs> Penalty coming up against the Maryville Saints as Lundquist tries to make a move at the blue line. Loses his balance, falls into the boards. But nevertheless, McKendry will head to the power play. A hooking call coming against the Saints with 13-01 left to go here in the first frame. We're all knotted at zero, but McKendry looking to make it a 1-0 game as they will head to the power play. You know, you hate to be a homer, but <laughs> he got hooked on the hands and then swan dive right after that. So, hey, but you, it, it is what it is. We're not wearing the white and black. We can't make those calls, but we definitely can complain, Corey. McKendry with possession on the half wall, feeds it up top. Pluto shot on. That one's off the blocker behind the net now. Bonnet trying to throw the puck up the boards. It's intercepted. McKendry back up to the blue line. They set up the umbrella up top at the blue line. Norlander feeds it to the half wall. A shot on, and Boyley's there to gobble it up. 12.33 left to go in the first. About 28 seconds have gone by in the minor penalty assessed to the captain, Jack Harrison. I don't know why, but it feels like there's been a lot more shots in this game than four. It really does. It seems like the, the offense is really picked up. As Pluto has it, his pass, the other side of the ice, goes past the stick, but it comes up as McKendry will maintain possession. Down in the corner, that pass was forced. It's pinned up against the boards. McKendry able to come out with it. Up to the blue line. Norlander makes a move. He loses the puck. Comes out front. Oh, off the stick of Dominic Boyley. The sauce pass. Boyley knocked it out of midair. Back into the corner. That puck behind the net. Here's a shot. That one's off the stick. Gloved down by Matt Edgecombe. And he'll fire it down as the Saints get a wholesale change. 11.46 left to go here in the first period. 40 seconds left to go on the Harrison Minor. What a, sorry, what a play to break that up. Yeah. Unbelievable. Great defense there and great goaltending by the Maryville Saints as McKendry will swoop back into their own zone as Reeder will assess his options. His pass goes off the stick of Joey Gagan. With it now, Amor oh, Amoregi. Shot on, pad save. Here's Dembski, another shot. That one's blocked into the corner. Lundquist feeds it down low to Amoregi. Dembski with it. He feeds it back down low, goes off the referee. Behind the net, up top to the blue line. Reader, a shot. That one's blocked. Jack Harrison comes out of the sin bin, blocks the shot. And there's Dominic Boyley to smother the puck with 10.46 left to go here in the first period. McKendry a couple opportunities to make it a 1-0 game. And the Maryville Saints, led by Dominic Boyley inside the cage, had something else to say about it. I still can't get over that play. How he, You know, we talked about how good he is with playing the puck, but, you know, he... He's good at defense. You know, you're just as good as that's a good as defensive play you can yeah, get. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're you're that extra. Hey, you're the extra defenseman, and your best defense, especially on the penalty kill, is your goalie. Ooh. As there was a shot right off the face off, went just wide of the cage. As there's Radke behind the net, it squeaks out towards the half wall. That pass might have come out of the zone, delayed off sides. And they'll blow the whistle as the McKendry Bearcats were showing some offensive zone pressure. But the puck squeaked out of the zone. And then the players thought they could keep on going with their forecheck. Unfortunately for them, the whistle has been blown. And they'll have to have a face-off just outside of the Maryville zone.
So a little complaining as Norlander, the captain for the McKendry Bearcats, talks with the officials. Here's Sokoff. Sokoff shot on. That one's wide of the net. Radke's there on the half wall. He'll dump it in. Maryville trying to exit their zone. It's kept in by the Bearcats. Still unable to get it out as Norlander did a good job at keeping that puck inside the zone. A shot on. That one's off his skate over the net. Pay attention to that net. It looks like it came off its moorings again. As the puck is behind the cage. Battling for it. McKendry coming out with it up top to the blue line. Norlander feeds it back down low. With it now is Sokoff. It's intercepted. Damian Karenji with speed. On his backhand to his forehand. Tries to make a move right outside the blue line. He could not. But here comes Jack Harrison. On his forehand. Loses the puck. Throws it out front. No one's there. It's a two on two. Sokoff enters into the zone. Makes a move. He's taken down by Jack Harrison. A big hit. Wolf a shot. Harrison's there to block it. He looks up with speed. Anthony Stavro to his backhand. Stavro to the forehand. The net comes off. The stick comes loose. And we have a whistle with 9-16. Corey, hate to be a homer, but did he throw his stick? Yeah, I mean that's what it looked like to me. You can't. I don't know how that's that. A penalty just, yeah, shot. that's a that's a penalty. I don't know how that you lose your stick like that. Looks like he threw it to me. Didn't get the call. Move on. McKendry wins the face off. They go high and hard off the glass. It goes off the stick of Phil Kemmer. No icy. Nate Simpson back with it. He throws it around the boards. No winger is there to exit the zone. It's kept in by McKendry. Sokoff battling for it behind the net. Bexty comes out with it. He'll float it over a couple bodies. It comes into the neutral zone. McKendry will regroup right inside their blue line. They hit the red, chips it in. There's Kemmer. Puck squeaks out of the zone. Back forward is Nate Simpson with 8.39 left to play here in the first period. Maryville exits their zone. It, the pass is a little bit too far and we have an icing call with 8.30 remaining here in the first frame. Five shots for the McKendry Bearcats, two for the Saints. It seemed like the Saints had a lot of, lot of energy early on. In the, and it's not like they don't still have that energy, but it seemed like that, that penalty they took kind of took the, the winds right out of their sails for a short period of time. But both of these teams are going right back and forth. It's been an exciting game so far here early on in this game. Now, much like the season series, it's uh, been a great season series so far. Oh, anytime these two teams are battling, it's, it's going to be a good game. These two teams have a past. As that puck comes up to the blue line, it's kept in by McKendry. And we know these two teams, and when they get together, something, something exciting is going to happen, whether that's a great game, maybe a couple fisticuffs. Who knows what could happen? Here's Joey Gaggin to his backhand. He tries to feed one to Stavro, who wasn't there. It's into the corner. McKendry trying to get it out. They can. A shot on. That one is off the pad and into the corner. McKendry will just get it out of their zone. Bonnet will step up. He'll just float it in. Prexler in on the forecheck. Back forward is Wickham. Jacob Wickham throws it around the boards. It's kept in. There's Bonnet. He tried to drag it. He stays with it. Here's Mudra, tries to feed one to the slot. Prexler was there waiting for the pass. It's blocked. McKendry going the other way. Lundquist, his shot on. That one's right into the glove of the Quebec native Dominic Boyley. 7.20 left to play here in the first period. Six shots for the Bearcats, three for the Saints. You know, Cole Bonnet looked a little slow going to the bench there. That We can't afford to lose him. No, he is a yeah. key player. He's a big body on the back end and kind of the leader of the defenseman as there's a shot. That one's wide behind the net. McKendry looks to cycle. They come up with it. It comes back up to the blue line. Dragging the line, throwing it back down to the half wall. Dembski's there. It's intercepted. Maryville unable to maintain possession. It's thrown back in by the Bearcats. Mudra. He's... 
looking to tack on another point tonight. Unable to get it out of the zone, though, as Henson comes up with it. One hand on his stick, feeds it to Mudra. Mudra looks up. He finds Alvagran, who hits the red line and dumps it in. Out of his net is Wesley Werner. Leaves it for his defenseman in Daniel Norlander. Here's Amaregi. He's at the red line. A big hit by Cole Mudra as he'll head to the bench. That gets the boys going. Jake Charche on the prowl as he is the only saint on the forecheck for the moment. Joey Gaggin showing pressure. And McKendry unable to gain entry into the zone. Back goes the Saints. Here's Charche. He goes between the legs, unable to get it to the net. Comes out into the corner, pinching in as Kemmer. He keeps it in. Kemmer down low. Sent back around the boards. Simpson's there. He keeps it in. Back down low. Gaggin. Leaves it for Charche. A shot on. It goes off a body and just wide. It could have ricocheted in, and the puck comes out of the zone. Simpson's there at the red line, and he'll just toss it back in. A little bouncing puck on net. Werner able to direct it into the corner. That pass goes a little too far with 527. It's down for an icing. The scheme is slowly starting to get a little more chippy. I mean, we knew it was going to happen at some time. At some point in this game, you knew it was going to happen. But watching the, the plays after the plays, this game is starting to tilt to that chippy game that Maryville likes to play, but we need to play smart. Maryville needs to play smart. Exactly. Jaden Bexie wins the faceoff. Goes under the stick of Tack. Tack goes back for it. His pass is intercepted. McKendry was unable to enter into the zone. They had a player that was offsides. The stretch pass off the stick of Damian Karenji. No icing call. A couple stretch passes, and that goes off the stick of Sokoff. And back with it now is Cole Bonnet. Good to see him back out on the ice. He tries to direct one towards the middle. It's off a of body and intercepted. McKendry, they come out of the zone. It's picked off by Karenji. Brad Boudreaux unable to get a stick on it. He'll head to the bench. Cole Bonnet back with it. Off the glass, off a of body. Pluto directs it to the middle off his body. Bexty's in. He leaves it for Karenji, a shot on, and that one is into the paraphernalia of Wesley Werner with 4.36 left to go here in the first period. Still knotted up at zeros, as that was probably one of the better opportunities for the Saints here in the first period. Yeah, that was, uh, I was holding my breath. I thought we had that. I thought Maryville had that one. So, Something's wrong with the puck. Yeah, looks like we need a new puck. That first line's fun to watch tonight, though. They have a lot of speed tonight, and it's very noticeable. Stavro, we've seen him score a couple goals throughout the year. One in particular in one game. He had four goals against the Midland Warriors. As the puck comes out of the blue line, Henson's there. He'll throw it back in. Werner out of his net. He'll leave it. McKendry will flip it out of their zone. Richardson's there. He'll leave it for Brown. Brown makes a move, unable to maintain possession. Prexler tries to slide one up to Stavro, unable to connect. It's going the other way as Brown will leave it for Richardson. They enter into the zone. Brown to Pluto. Richardson back around the net. Here's Brown out front. It's coming in. That's a block shot. It's still... In the Maryville zone, it comes behind the net. Pluto out front. No one's there but T.J. Prexler. He goes the other way. Prexler hits the blue line. Henson now on his backhand. Uses his big body, throws him to the front of the net, and that one is just wide of the cage. Pluto able to chip it out of the zone as Kemmer will throw it back in. Delayed off sides. And Anthony Stavro battling for the puck. 3.23 left to go here in the first period. Kind of looked like Stavro got his feet back on the blue line and then started battling for that puck. I think at first he was still trying to lift the stick and then he hit the blue line with the skates. At that point you think, hey, it's not offsides anymore. 
That's what it looked like to me. I know that's uh, that play happened earlier on the Maryville side, and they let it play on, so it is what it is. Warner behind his net, leaves it for the defense. Maryville takes possession of the puck behind the net. Jake Charche is there, battling for it. Christian Alvagran, Cole Mudra, shot on, and Werner's able to shut the door. 3.05 left to go as the shots have started to tip towards Maryville scale. It looks like they have had all the momentum in the second half of this first period. Yeah, this, is, this game has had a really good pace so far. A little, some whistles here and there, and one one power play, a one penalty kill for Maryville, but other than that, it's been a great game. Puck on the half wall, the shot from Simpson. Couldn't find the net. A shot on, that one looked like it hit off the, sh oh my goodness, and that one is just wide. That shot looked like it hit off of the shoulder of Werner. No icing call as Boyley touched it. Thrown back around. Boudreaux's there. He'll go off the boards. Joey Gagan hits the blue line. Gagan to his backhand. Throws one to the front and unable to connect with Karenji. Kept in. Back with it now. McKendry looking to break out. They do. They hit the red line. Lundquist makes a move. Tries to go between three players. He cannot. Richardson fans on it. Here's Stavro. Tries to feed one to the front of the net. Another diving defense as McKendry comes up with the puck. Going the other way now. McKendry has numbers. Oh, big sliding defense play by Jack Harrison. He can do it offensively and defensively. Here's Albagran. Albagran on his forehand, feeds it out front. Oh, Cole Mudra was bumped off the puck. He had a wide open net. Here's Harrison. And of course, the net has come dislodged with 129 left to play here in the first period. Some great, great chances for the Saints here with only a couple minutes left to go in the first period. Yeah, it's a shame there's only a minute 29 left in the first because I feel like Maryville's really starting to get their wheels turning. They've played good all period, but I feel like they're just, they're, they're about to get one. Shot on right from the faceoff, and that's into the glove of Wesley Werner. Almost caught me off guard there. I've celebrated a couple times. I thought we had a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. Cole Mudra, I mean, he, he had a wide open net and just got bumped off the puck last second. As McKendry looks to exit their zone, they can't. Henson's shot. That was a high one. The rebound and unable to put it in were the Saints. Alva Grant up to Henson. Henson a shot. And a nice save by Werner. He's been a vacuum all games thus far. A lot of high shots at have been hitting Warner and there's been rebounds just sitting there. He's really been fighting him off and he hasn't been able to hold him and exactly. keep him in his body. So Maryville's doing good at that. Absolutely. And that's got to be frustrating for a goalie as Maryville wins the draw. Here's Stavro. Shot. That one goes just wide. Harrison to the front. It's in the slot. McKendry able to come up with it. Omega gets it out. Dembski looking to get it in the zone. He'll just Play it back to Wickham. Wickham, his shot goes off the blocker of Boyley, off the glass and at the half wall. Scrum throws it back down low. Omaragi battling for it. Harrison battling for it. Simpson. Henson comes out with it. Goes off a of body and just squeaks inside the blue line. That play by Simpson, tried to go off the wall, fanned on it, stays in the zone. Henson throws it up in the middle. It's picked off. Scrum's there. 15 seconds left to go here in the first period. Battling in the corner. Will time wind down? It just might as that puck goes up to the half wall. It's loose in front. And the buzzard sounds 
A little scare there at the end of the period. Maryville unable to get the puck out of their zone. It almost cost them a goal late in the first frame as the teams will say a couple words to one another. A little push and shove here and there, but that'll do it for this first period. No goals have been scored here in the first. We're going to head to the intermission. I'll be joined with Will Starwalt, so don't go anywhere. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Corey Madden. Maryville Saints Hockey coming your way here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'll start with a... Um, split squat and then followed by that will be a series of different kinds of jumps and movements that will try and get me get off the ground as quickly as possible. So before workouts I roll out for probably 10 minutes max. After I go through my rolling routine I'll generally go into a dynamic warm-up and then I'll head to the gym and start my workout. I pair hurdle hops after um, a different leg exercise, like a squat or a split squat. Um, so you get the strength part, and then after you do the strength part and you're, you're loaded with weight, you come over here and you're trying to be light on your feet and quick off the ground to, again, increase your explosiveness and speed on the ice. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. Hi, I'm Ethan Mahalachek, and I'm a game design major from St. Louis, Missouri. I decided on game design because it was something that knew that they were offering at Maryville. It was kind of an addition to the interactive design program, and when they offered it, I hopped right on board. I've always loved video games, and so um, I figured, why not try to make them? The professors have helped me build up to where I'm at at the moment in a variety of ways, but one of the most important and influential, I think, has been them pushing me to take projects that I've done and push them to their limits. Here at Maryville, it's required as a design student that you do at least one internship. I kind of went a little bit beyond that and have done three at this point, or I'm currently in my third. I'd say my favorite part about the program is that it's still kind of small at the moment, and so that allows for a really close connection with the professors and fellow students in the classroom and a lot of involved work in the classroom. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes on, a lot of, you know, helping each other. If you're interested in game design and even more so interested in Maryville, why not stop by, take a tour, and see what we're all about. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. 
Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. Welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Will Starwald as we bring you the Wausau Intermission Report. Will, 0-0 game so far. Both teams look pretty good, especially, yep. uh, you know, 3-1 last, last night's game. But uh, the speed has been there in tonight's game. Yeah, not quite what we expected. We figured there'd be a few more goals, but go both goalies have been playing fantastic on top of their game which is always kind of fun to see from my standpoint. I played yeah. goalie. I mean, it was a different sport, but it's always nice to see goalies having a good game. It makes every goal that much more exciting. We saw one play in particular, Dominic Boyley, when McKendry was on the power play. And, by the way, I'll circle back to this because, one, Maryville had a lot of energy going there early on, and it seemed like that power play for McKendry kind of slowed it down. And then we saw... Maryville end up getting that uh, that jump back at the end of the at, at the end of the period, but Dominic Boyley made a terrific play in their own zone on that McKendry power play. It was a sauce right out front, and Dominic Boyley just stuck his stick out and knocked it out of midair back into the corner. I don't even know if you call that a save or, or what it was, but you that kind of alludes to what we were saying in terms of how awesome this goaltending has been so far. And Wesley Werner has been fantastic, too, for the Bearcats. And that's just having the confidence in your own ability and in your team knowing I'm going to get this and knock it away. Because if you go in there thinking I may get this, I may not, you're probably not going to get it. Right. you got to have the confidence going in there that I'm getting this puck and I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. And that's what he did, and the, that's the result. And there was also a play where it looked like he stood on his head for a moment, yeah. spinning around trying to keep the puck out of there and that's a credit to his team he made a lot of great saves but there was a lot of shots that got blocked before he even got near the goal absolutely that's one thing that we've seen all years this team loves to block shots and that starts from the the head coach coach hogan has said hey you're blocking shots if you're going to be on this team if you don't block shots you're not going to play that's what he told us the very first interview <laughs> we had with him exactly and hey you don't block shots you don't have great goaltending you take that penalty and then boom, whammy, you're down one nothing. Yeah, that's we we saw it and we he said Jack Harrison, who was in the penalty box on that one, it it all stems down from him and he was in the box, but he saw his guys out there diving. As soon as he came back from the penalty kill, got right on his knees, jumped in front of one. So I mean that's the kind of you know camaraderie that this team has is hey, we're all taking shots. Well, we'll see what happens here in the second period. We'll see if one team can Put one in the back of the net and make it a one nothing game. Maybe we'll see multiple goals in the second period. Who knows? Should be exciting second frame here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Will Starwalt. Don't go anywhere. The second period is coming your way here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I've always wanted to go back to school. But getting a degree feels complicated now. I don't know if I can fit into my life like I did before. And I think about all the new jobs out there. Everything's moving so fast. I need a degree to help me further my career, but one that is worth my time and money. And I'm ready for the next step and to make sacrifices. But I want a university that believes in me the way that I do. Here at Maryville University, we stand for those who are brave. We've been bravely revolutionizing higher education for those striving to achieve for nearly 150 years. We're developing degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. Now, we're bringing this high quality education online so you can study anywhere at any time. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. 
Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. All the work, because the road to the next level never ends. All the work, all the sweat. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. Block it out. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm checked. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm checked. I'm black. All the work, because the road to the next level never ends. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. There are very few companies that offer the opportunities that you'll find at Arco Construction. I guess some companies, their mentality is, it's this way, you know, or no other way. And Arco really is just like, hey, it's about having a, a great atmosphere, a fun environment, work hard, play hard. We truly do bleed Arco blue. Um, it is a family here. We are culture. You know, which sounds kind of weird, but at the end of the day, you know, everybody always asks me what is unique about Arco, and I just think that our culture is, is one that uh, can't be rivaled by any other company or any other opportunity. If somebody really wants to do something special with their, their lives and their career, uh, I think this is the best company to be able to do that. We're about serving others. We're, we're, we're about culture. We're about, we're about stretching you. We're about uh, stretching ourselves. We're about uh, you know, making a difference. I think I'd have to say we are tireless. We are experts in what we do. We are definitely not lazy. We are the game changer. Construction is moving more and more into the design build realm. Arco is the true design builder out there in a world of a lot of construction companies who like to throw the term around very loosely. We really are it. We win projects, we have fun, uh, we create opportunities for individuals' financial success. So we like to win, and we're very successful. We're the best place you're ever going to work. Clear bar none. That's the way it is. You're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to set the standard. Arco is going to set a standard. And if you come to work here, then basically you're going to understand what the standard, what that bar is, and you're going to adjust everything else by this company. You're going to understand what the other companies are compared to this company. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree, but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Seconds. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have a 0 0 game here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Corey Madden. Corey, what'd you see from the Saints in the first period? I saw a lot of energy and I liked it. Yeah, it was a great first period. Maryville had a lot of energy, throwing pucks at the net, at 10 shots, but it felt like there was 40 shots. Yeah. Um, not a bad, a disciplined period. Not not you know not a lot of penalties. One period, why well, one penalty? So that's a good that's a good thing. Could have been we've seen a lot worse a couple weeks ago when yeah. there was 75 penalty minutes in the second period. So we'll see how this one goes. But <laughs> 75. <laughs> <laughs> it really felt like that, though, didn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it really did. So we'll, we'll see how the second period goes. But 
I would have liked to have seen another three or four minutes in that first period because it feels like Maryville was on had 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 McKendry on their toes and felt like we were just seconds away from a goal. No, absolutely, and I mean, there's still 40 minutes left to play in this game, so hey, there very well could be 75 penalty minutes because who knows what could happen in this game, especially when you're playing a rival in McKendry. I mean, we know these two teams don't like each other at all. And McKendry's looking for that second win to even the series up as Maryville, I mean, they lead in the season series 2-1 to one so far. And in this COVID year, we talked about it in the pregame show, the MCH, the conference tournament, it's not happening. So these games are huge for both these teams, especially being ranked 13th and 14th respectively. Maryville has the upper edge, so McKendry's going to come out looking for blood in this second game. That's metaphorically. Maybe maybe uh, not. I don't know, especially the way these two teams play. But I think it should be a fun one. Still knotted up at zero as these two teams await. They're waiting for the Zamboni driver to shut the gate. And he does. And the teams are out of... <laughs> The two teams are ready to go as they skate onto the ice. Jack Harrison giving fist bumps to all of the players. And Will and I, we talked about it in the intermission report. Jack Harrison, he took that penalty, which we thought was a little sketchy. Maybe not a penalty. We said it. We hate to be homers, but sometimes you just can't help it. But he took the penalty and immediately coming out of the box, dives and blocks a shot. I mean, that's on brand. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's Maryville hockey to the T. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I know you guys covered it, but that's what Coach said. If you don't block shots, you don't play. Yeah. And this team, they do. Everybody blocks shots. They're blocking shots in practice. Yeah. You know, they're, they're out there diving and, and blocking shots in practice. Not And not just an accidental. They're blocking shots in practice. This team is, is all about team play. I mean, that, I mean, that is huge. You you practice the way, or I'm sorry, you play the way you practice. So if you're blocking shots in practice, which I'm sure if you ask a lot of people, they're absolutely not doing that. No way. Yeah, I, I wasn't, so I'm not scared to say it. But here we go. The puck has been dropped. The second period has started, and Maryville has won it. Goes off the stick and down into the McKendry zone. Werner out of his cage. Plays the puck around the boards. McKendry throws it out of the zone. Matt Edgecombe chops at it. Portel is there. A shot on him. Pad saved by Boyley. It comes out of the zone and will trickle down into the McKendry territory. No icing called as they go D to D. Norlander throws it up. Off the stick. It's kept in. He gloves it down. Skates with it on his backhand. He'll spin. Look for a stretch pass. It goes off the stick. Maryville able to come up with it. Harrison goes off the boards, gets it in deep. Stavro chops at it, unable to get the puck as McKendry will go off the glass. Down into the Maryville zone. Henson around the net, throws it up. It's kept in, though. Goes off the stick. Unable to find it, though. Maryville with numbers the opposite way. Karenji to Stavro, Stavro to the backhand, a nice sliding play, unable to get the pass off. And McKendry going the opposite way as Pluto spins, feeds it up to Brown. It's pinned up against the boards in the corner. Still battling for it, comes around the boards. Sent back down low, here's Bonnet, throws it back up top as they play pitch and catch. Behind the net, a feed. Out front, no one's there for McKendry. Stavro racing after it. Reader's there. He will chop at it, goes off the boards. Reader gets bumped by Damian Karenji. Puck stays behind the net. Pluto on his backhand will throw it back around. Here's Brad Boudreau on the half wall. Feeds it back down low for Harrison on his backhand to his forehand. Feeds it out front. Pluto. To Brown. Brown hits the red line. We'll throw it in as Pluto will enter in on the four check. Pluto unable to come up with it. Comes up to the blue line. A shot on. A rebound. That
That one's off the boards. Here's Brad Boudreaux in. Feeds it back to Karinji. A shot. That one's just high. It's good for three, though. 17.30 left to go here in the first. Noble back the other way for the Bearcats. Shot goes off the stick. He comes up with it again. Throws it around the boards. Kemmer back for it. McKendry feeds it up top to Scrum. Scrum a shot. That one's blocked. Goes just wide. Little back and forth action to start the second period. A little floater on net. That one's into the corner. Scrum throws it around. That's Noble. There's two pucks on the, on the ice. Two pucks on the ice. What is going on here? I'm sure one of them that got caught in the net earlier in the game must have uh, found its way back onto the ice. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. You know, I will say I've played hockey for 20, I'd say 21 years, if my math is correct. And I have never once seen that happen, where yep. there has been two pucks on the ice. That's yeah. interesting. I, got, I can't. I do not recall a time when that's happened. Now, it happens on the baseball field when you're playing Little League Baseball. You have foul balls going into other fields and stuff. Never seen that in a hockey game. McKendry with it. That's Johansson. Buck comes up to the blue line. A two-on-one for the Saints. Alvagran in. A shot on. He scores! Christian Alvagran goes off the post. I think Cole Mudra came in to make sure it went in. Either way, 1-0 Maryville as they get things started here in the second period. 16-35 left to play. What a bounce for the Saints. We've talked about it all year. Sometimes you don't get the bounces. Sometimes you do. That was a huge bounce for the Saints as they hopped over the defenseman's stick. They go in two on one. And they bury. Unbelievable as they take the one nothing lead. Yeah, and Maryville had a chance a few minutes before that to, to get on the board. and well, Here we go. Well, Maryville had a chance to, to get on the board a couple minutes before that on the uh, you know breakaway or an odd man rush and couldn't find the back of the net. And then Christian Alvagran, our player to watch. Yeah. There is the puck. You called it. Which his speed, he just looks like he's gliding up the ice, but yeah. he is moving. He is cooking. Effortle effortlessly. And taking a penalty, Ryan Reeder. So Maryville will head to the power play for the first time tonight, looking to tack on another goal and make it a 2-0 game. Harrison up to the point. They slide it over. Henson will chop at it. Goes behind the net. Prexler unable to corral it. Harrison racing after it. Stavro keeping it in with a skate. Throws it back down low for Prexler. Prexler on his back into the half wall. It bumps off the stick. Bexy working for it. He comes back up with it. Comes behind the net. Derschel battling for it. For the McKendry Bearcats as Prexler comes up with it behind the cage. Bexty at the goal line. Feeds it up top to Henson. Back of the half wall to Bexty. Throws it down low for Prexler. Prexler to the front and Stavros there but unable to get a shot off. Throws it over to Bexty. Bexty to the slot and that one goes off his stick. Bexty had an opportunity to shoot that puck. That is wide open. Yeah, wide open lane. Stavro at the point to Henson. They switch spots. Henson uses his body. A shot on. Pad save and Werner's there to smother it. 15-23 left to go here in the second period. Just under a minute left in that Ryan Reeder minor. Yeah, you really would like to have seen Bexley take that shot. Oh. He was wide open. It was just him and the goalie. Yeah. And they were giving it to him. Yeah. He had it. Taking the draw, Cole Mudra. He loses it. And McKendry will send it down out of his net. Dominic Boyley, he'll leave it for Cole Bonnet. Bonnet will set up, shot behind his own net, leaves it for Alvagran. Alvagran with speed on his forehand on the right side. He'll throw it in. Behind the net, the puck goes. It comes around the boards, off the glass, and out of the zone. Bonnet's there at the red line. Bonnet throws one off the glass, back into the zone. Unfortunately for the Saints, the McKendry Bearcats will throw it back down low, and on it 
was Kirill Proskurin. So a defensive zone faceoff for the Saints. 26 seconds left on the power play. Going back to that first goal, it looked like Alvagran got the goal. Did he not? That's what I thought. I thought initially he did, but when Cole Mudra poked it in and started celebrating, everyone went towards Cole Mudra. It made me think that maybe that went a little double doink and Mudra was there to put it in the net for the goal. I mean, either way, it doesn't matter to me because Maryville leads one nothing. Yeah, I thought I thought Christian Almagran put that in the back of the net. We will have to take a look at that whenever we get a chance. So face off coming goes off of the shin pad. So behind the net, Maryville will break out of the zone. Bexty up to Harrison. Harrison with Prexler. This pass goes off his skate. It's kept in by Stavro, but sent back down as he is unable to keep possession of the puck. That'll do it for the power play. Both teams 0 for 1 tonight. Harrison, he'll leave it for Stavro. Stavro, he loses his handle on the puck. Henson's there. Henson behind the net, the defenseman using his big body. He battles for it. It's kept in at the blue line. Simpson, his shot on, he goes off his skate and into the glove of Wesley Werner. 14.04 left to play here in the second period. 14 shots for the Saints, 11 for the Bearcats. Werner, other than that goal, he's had a, a pretty solid game so far for the McKendry Bearcats. He wears a C on his chest, something odd that you, you, know, you typically don't see a goalie wearing the captain patch. So Reeder, who just served his penalty, exits the zone. McKendry into the zone, and laying a big hit was Nate Simpson, but he lost his footing, fell down to the ice. Kemmer, his pass, goes off the stick of Scrum, so no icing call. McKendry, stretch pass. Dembski can't connect. And... And offsides has been called. Corey, it's finally good to be back here. It really is. It's been a while since we've been here. It's been a while since this team has played a home game. I'm just glad to be back here with you and calling some good old Maryville Saints hockey for all the fans out there who can't be with us here at the rink. We appreciate you tuning in to the broadcast. 13, 33 left to go. As that puck squeaks by Josh Tack with it. Cole Bonnet unable to get it out. Comes around the net. Tack's there on his backhand. Feeds it up the boards. It's kept in. McKendry battling for the puck behind the net. With it now is Boudreaux. Boudreaux using his body. He loses the puck. Radke able to get it out. Goes off a couple shin pads back into the zone. And now out of the zone. With speed, shot on. Another save by Dominic Boyley. He's been terrific thus far. Jack Harrison, Karenji with Boudreaux. And offsides will be called if the Saints can't tag up. They finally do, though. Another stretch pass. We've seen too many of those tonight. Some of them almost, paid, almost end up costing... McKendry right there, they got an opportunity. Dominic Boyley able to say no with 12.34 left to play. Yeah, it's good to be back. I miss, I miss Chuck. Chuck couldn't be here tonight. He's probably at home watching his favorite TV show, the, the Tiger King he always talking about. The Tiger King? Yeah, he's always talking about it. That, Weird. Sh that show is pretty old now. It seems like... He's got a poster in his basement. You haven't seen it yet? No. I'll have to show you. That pass goes off a stick down into the McKendry zone behind the net. With it, Mudra up top to Cole Bonnet. And that's Matt Edgecombe, pardon me. No icing called. Boily out of his cage, throws it around the boards. Cole Mudra's there. Backhand to Alvagran. Alvagran can't handle the puck. 
But no worries, Matt Edgecombe is there, but he goes offside with 11.59 left here in the second period. I, I don't know, but it looks like to me that if you're going to call that offside, shouldn't you be on the blue line, not 30, 20 feet inside the blue line before you call it offside? You know, Corey, sometimes you just got to bear with what's going on, man. You can't be too reasonable. As that shot from the red line goes all the way over the glass into the netting. 11.51 left here in the second period. What is, what is he uh, arguing about? The coach, Kendry's coach is giving it to the refs every single chance he gets. Got to let him know you're there. Yeah. Just a little bit more noticeable when there's no stands here, or no people in the stands, so you can kind of hear everything a little better. So I think what he was arguing about, they were going to call it an offsides as they had the the faceoff coming outside of the blue line, but he was behind the red line when they shot it down, so that would be an, ice, an icing call. As that pass goes off a stick and into the netting once again. Seems like the net's coming to Slodge or the puck's going over the glass. Either way, lots of whistles tonight. We talked about the flow of the game, trying to get in that flow of the game. We've seen a little bit of it in the first. Things got a little slower. Midway through the first, they picked back up, and we saw a lot of speed, a lot of energy. That's my, that's my word tonight, Corey, energy. I love it. You have a lot of energy tonight, too. I do. I'm having fun tonight. McKendry enters into the zone. They throw it in deep behind the net. Simpson off the glass. Squeaks out of the zone. Radke tries to throw it back in. He does. Boyley out of his cage. Kemmer whiffs on the pass. Still behind the net. Comes down the other way. Now it's reversed once again. Lundquist there. Throws it back down deep. That pass out front. No one's there to keep it in the zone. Werner comes out of his cage. He'll leave it. Noble at the blue line, goes off the boards, hits off of perhaps the ref. Stavro now, his backhand pass to Karenji. Goes off the stick, it's kept in. Oh, a shot on and a deflection. Werner able to snag it with 10.33 left to play. That one caught me off guard. I'm sure it caught Werner off guard, too, but he was able to make the stop. Yeah, Karenzi just throwing his stick at the puck and almost found the net. It's a heads-up play by Anthony Stavro just to get pucks on net. Good location as he threw that right where Karenzi to get the tip. Dershel working for it. Throws it around the boards. Kept in by Bonnet. Shot on. Goes off his skate. Karenji comes up with it. His pass over to Jack Harrison. Can't connect. Harrison throws it back towards the front. Henson keeps it in to Karenji. That's Tack actually. Tack shot on. Goes off a of body behind the net. Harrison back the other way. Dershel on his forehand. He'll just chip it off the boards. Goes back to him. He'll throw it back into the zone. Tack back for it. He comes up with it, trying to get it out. It's kept in. McKendry, there's Scrum. It's on the side of the net, and Dominic Boyley able to put a glove over it. 9.39 left here in the second period. One thing I, I, I didn't miss was how cold this rink is. Dude, it's unbelievably cold. Yeah. And apparently they put new ice on recently so that can attribute to why it is cold <laughs> as it is freezing in here oh yeah absolutely i mean i have a, another jacket on. i have a winter jacket on as that shot goes off the side of the net kept in mckendry now showing life as they trail by one matt edgecomb battling for the puck McKendry on the half wall, goes behind the cage. Comes out front, goes off the side of the net, back into the corner. Maryville can't get it out of the zone, it's kept in. 
finally getting it out as Jake Charche races after it. He pokes it to the front of the net, loses a stick, tries to kick it, playing a little soccer with it as he goes around the boards. Was looking for a stick, but he'll just get a line change instead. And offsides has been called. I don't know about that one. I have no idea what he was looking at. Yeah, there. even the other linesmen came up to him, and they were, I, I don't know why that was an offsides call. Maybe the referee thought the stick was a player, and perhaps he was offsides, as that was Jay Charche who lost his stick. I, I mean, that was a three-on-one. Yeah, that's a huge, a huge whistle there that looked good to me. And we are standing right on the blue line and we're up top yeah we might have the best look at it uh, out of anybody Kemmer comes in shot on rebound and it's knocked away and sent back down for an icing 8 23 left to go and with you saying that I am confident that that was on sides oh absolutely that was yeah absolutely you mentioned how cold it is in one of the, you know, the NHL. They're having their their outdoor game at Lake Tahoe, mate. Kind of, they played one period, and apparently it's too warm there. Maybe we can give them some of the temperature here, kind of even the, you know, even it out a little bit. And that game should be starting up here in about 15 minutes once again. Starting to get chippy. Yep, here's some uh, words being said as Norlander skated right towards Prexler, said something to him. I'm sure he said, you're having a really great game, TJ. You're playing outstanding. Probably along the lines of that. Probably sure. along the lines of absolutely. Great sportsmanship. They're definitely not talking smack. Not at all. No. I would never even think that they would do that. Especially in the game of hockey. Oh, uh oh opportunity for McKendry. They come on a shot. There's Boyley. It's knocked away. Maryville going the other way. It's a three on three with speed. Stavro leaves it for Praxler. Back to Stavro. Oh, no. Take it into the goalie was Jaden Bexty. He got knocked down and flew into the net. And I believe even if Stavro would have scored that and put it in the back of the net, I'm not sure if they would have called it a goal. Yeah, I don't know how you I don't know how you push a player in the net like that and nothing happens. It just looks like a little bit of maybe interference. But we might need to take our suits and ties off and go put a striped sweater on that wouldn't be fair i'm a, I'll, i bleed you know maryville red and black so it's, <laughs> it's not gonna happen your referee outfit wouldn't be black and white it'd be it'd be red red black and white i guess mm -hmm. here we go two hands to the head right oh there. here we go josh tack getting into it and by getting into it it looks like he's going to be getting into the penalty box as the referee says, both of you. It definitely should be both because who was I don't know who it was on McKendry. I didn't two-handed him right to the right to the helmet. And that's and that's Kirill Proskurin. Both of them getting the gate. Well, not the gate, but getting the the penalty. Seven thirty-nine left here in the second period. Corey, you predicted it. It's getting chippy. Things could get ugly in the third, especially if the game continues on this this pace and this trend. Well, Maryville plays a very tough game, and McKendry likes to play past the whistle. So it's yeah. got all the makings of a very oh, interesting game. That's all I'm saying. Plus, this is our fourth this is their fourth game together, so we know how game number two went. That was a fun one. Yeah. Last night seemed to be a little 
a little bit more of a hockey game. So. So Norlander, the captain for the Bearcats, talking with the referee as well as the captain for the Maryville Saints, Jack Harrison, as they're setting up shop right outside that little half circle for the referees where they call home. So somebody is getting the gate, and that will be Kirill Proskurin. He looks upset as his nine is done. Or so, I guess we'll find out. Perhaps he could have gotten a two and a ten as there's 739 left to play, so there would be no reason for him to sit in the box if he was serving that 10-minute penalty. We'll find out if he will be back on the ice. Sometimes it's tough not being right next to the box because we don't know the full story. The story is that he is no longer on the ice for now. <laughs> It is a four on four. The ice opens up, and here comes the defense, Cole Bonnet. He'll leave it for Matt Edgecombe. Edgecombe over to Harrison, back to Edgecombe. Edgecombe on his backhand as Jack Harrison got knocked down, and the McKendry Bearcats got on their feet with some rowdy applause. With it now, Norlander, the defenseman, leaves it for Radke. Radke on his backhand. Chasing him is Alvagran, both with speed. Oh, what a defensive play by Alvagran. He dove, knocked that puck away, and Maryville now has possession inside their own zone. Alvagran will take it behind his own net. From his backhand to his forehand, to his backhand, to the forehand. Bobs and weaves in the neutral zone, throws it around the boards. Jack Harrison there. A little over a minute left in the penalties. Stepping up was Henson. Breakaway opportunity to the backhand. Oh, baby, what a save, Dominic Boyley. Big pad save by the freshman. That one looked easy, Corey. Yeah, he didn't look like a freshman on that save, that's for sure. Shot down, and an icing has been called with 6.16 left to go here in the second period. So a big opportunity for McKendry to knot this one up at one and Dominic Boyley shutting the door. A huge pad save from the Quebec native. Yeah, and that last 20, 30, 30 seconds, both key, uh, both players of the game had a huge, huge plays there. You know, Christian Alvagran got back to break that play up and then Boyley with the huge save. And on the four check, TJ Prexler, he loses the puck. With it now, a two on two, Dembski. That pass from Noah Scrum goes off his skate. Still four on four for about 10 more seconds as Henson makes the pass, goes off the stick of Anthony Stavro. Losing the puck. Here comes Henson in the slot, his shot, that one's blocked. Huge block, and now McKendry going the other way. Richardson. Shot on. Boyley's there. Makes the save. 529 left to go here in the second period. Boyley has looked fantastic in tonight's game. You mentioned it earlier, Corey, just not too long ago. That save he made, it definitely did not look like he was a freshman. He looked very calm, cool, and collected on that breakaway opportunity for McKendry, just slamming the door shut. He has looked great tonight. He really has. He had that massive play there, and then he had the play earlier in the penalty kill. Tack with the puck, enters into the zone, a shot on into the glove of Wesley Werner. 5-17 left to go here in the second period. So an offensive zone draw for the Saints. Werner looking to cover it up. Boudreau running into him. Lundquist comes up with it. Another breakaway opportunity in. Noble scores. 
fist pumps the air as he ties it up one to one. An unfortunate goal given up by Dominic Boyley. We were just praising him for just how great he has been. But sometimes when you give up a couple breakaways, a couple key opportunities for the opposing teams, they're going to capitalize on it. And they did. One to one, McKendry ties it up. They dump it in deep. The Bearcats in on the four check. Phil Kemmer pinned up against the boards. Alvagran comes out with it with speed. Two on one with Mudra. Alvagran a slap shot. He scores! Christian Alvagran! 2 1 Maryville. They say the next shift after a goal is the you know the biggest shift. Oh yeah. And then he skates down and does that. Perfect. Perfect. What I mean, what speed. Oh my goodness. He flew through the neutral zone and just like that, he was by three Bearcat players and just blew by everybody. Wound up slap shot. Bingo, bango, boom. Back of the net. And then what's he do? He turns around and skates right to the circles and is ready for the next play. Another two on one. Alba Grant and Mudra. Again, a shot on. He scores! This time it stays on the ice. Deja vu. 3 1 Maryville. They have a two goal lead. 436 left to go here in the second frame. Christian Albagran, our player to watch, has been on fire. Man, he can just score at will. When he it just feels like when he turns it on, he's he's he can score. Anytime he throws his puck at the net, it's gonna hit the back of the net. I mean that just happened. The same thing just happened. Albagran Mudra two on one. And what's funny. As the puck goes in, Mudra tries to throw one to the front of the net. Alvagran, I mean, he roofed one on that second goal. As McKendry comes in, a shot on, they score! Wow! Things have turned up here in the second period. What a shot! Going right under the bar. What a shot by... Jesper Lundqvist. That was incredible. 3-2. Let's see what happens next, yeah. Corey. What is going on? The last two minutes, if that. I feel like nothing was happening throughout the entire game. And then everything just bursted with just complete entertainment right now for all the fans watching. This has been a terrific couple of minutes this has been great if you're a hockey fan but the two goal lead for the Saints has dwindled down to one as they'll look to respond Henson back in his own zone will float one off the glass down for an icing 349 left to play here in the second period I want to go back to those two Christian Albegrand goals that first one I mean he roofed it so if you're Wesley Werner, you see another two-on-one, same players, same situation. You're thinking he's probably going to go high again. I mean, the puck didn't even hit, didn't even leave the ice. No, it no. If it did, it was paper, maybe a paper high. Yeah. Now it's a four-on-one. Here come the Saints. A little pass on to Jake Charche. He was unable to connect with it, and Wesley Warner was able to gobble it up. 3.41 left to go. A lot of talking after the whistle. Oh, this third period is going to be very entertaining. I'm already looking forward to it. We still got 3.41 left to go here in the second period. Lots of things can happen. We saw basically as that puck... From the face-off, goes right into the glove of Wesley Werner. I mean, we just saw, what was it, four goals in a matter of two minutes? My math is correct. 
Yeah, it was. Uh, it was exciting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, for sure. Puck comes up to the blue line. Bonnet a shot on. Oh, goes off the glove and squeaks by into the corner. Dembski can't get it out. A move by Karinji at the blue line. It stays in. Boudreaux fighting for it behind the net. He's pinned up against the boards, using one hand on a stick. It comes around the boards. Bonnet there to keep it in. Throws it back down low. Boudreaux behind the net on his backhand. Throws it back up top to Bonnet. Bonnet stops at the blue line, feeds it to Boudreaux. Across the ice to Tack. Tack down low. Bexty out front. Off Boudreaux. He's taken down. Tack walks the line, throws it over to Bonnet. Bonnet shot on, goes wide. Boudreaux unable to get it on net. Goes under the stick of Bexty and Reader's there for the Bearcats. Trying to come up with the puck. He goes off the boards high. Love down by Cole Bonnet. It's stick down into... The net, oh, and Josh Tack was taken down, flies into Dominic Boyley. And some more pushing and shoving, some words being said. The net came off, and let's hope both players are okay as Tack tumbled into Dominic Boyley. But that was the opportunity for the refs to keep this game clean. Yeah. No, You're going to yeah. let that happen, and now it's going to get out of hand. They... You're not going to just let that go as a Maryville hockey player. You're not going to let someone just come in and two-hand one of your players. So now th this is where it could get chippy. I mean, we've been saying it, but this could be the turning point. Yeah. That's interesting you mentioned that, as that faceoff was won by McKendry. Comes up to the blue line, kept in. Harrison trying to get it out. It goes off a of body. McKendry trying to make a couple moves, and now a penalty is being called. And that is a direct result of what just happened before. I mean, you, you called it, Corey. You absolutely called it. Jack Harrison going to the box as he just absolutely threw the McKendry Bearcat to the ice. But that's exactly what, I mean, that's what I wanted to say. You don't call something that happened like we just saw before this penalty at the end of the play, the whistle, the offensive zone draw. Now... You let all this stuff transpire because the tone has been set, essentially. And that was also textbook embellishment. He flopped like he was going for an Olympic gold medal right there. <laughs> but Kendry shot on. That one goes off a stick just high. They set up shop on the half all up top to the blue line. Back down to the other side. It goes behind the net. Amaregi with it on his backhand. He cycles the puck. Comes up to the blue line. Reader's there. Keeps the puck in. Feeds it over to Lundquist. We saw a shot from him that went into the back of the net not too long ago. Little back and forth action. McKendry able to come up with it at the top of the blue line. Feeds it over to Scrum. Scrum back for Reader. Reader a shot on. Boyley's able to make the save as it goes into his chest. Pushing and shoving after the whistle. We're going to see that all night the rest of the way. 137 left here in the second period. 114 left to go in that Jack Harrison minor. McKendry still, or Maryville still leads, three to two. Shots are even at 22 apiece. And there's Simpson as he gives a little, a little crying uh, gesture. You're, you know, wiping your tears. It's probably good. There's only a minute 35 left in this period. Oh, I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen? When the buzzer sounds, that's when stuff really gets chippy as Ooh. that puck goes off the glass down into the McKendry zone. Shane Pluto there, but guess who's on the puck? Cole Mudra. Mudra battling for it. It took three McKendry Bearcats to come out with the puck as Mudra skates to the bench. With it now, Sokoff. Sokoff in on his backhand. He'll leave it for Pluto. Pluto. Fans on the shot. Comes down below the goal line as McKendry will try and set things up once again. That puck goes off the stick and comes out of the zone. Werner out of his cage. 41 seconds left here in the second period. Out on the ice now, Anthony Stavril. He'll take a hack. 
That was Norlander who entered into the zone. They lose the puck. It's kept in. Richardson keeps it in a couple times. It hits off a skate. There's Harrison. He'll leave it for Edgecombe. The defenseman's in. Makes a move at the blue line. Loses it. Harrison, a shot on. It's loose. And it's smothered by Wesley Werner. Matt Edgecombe, the big defenseman with an opportunity to make it a 4-2 game. He elected to just dish it off to his forward and Jack Harrison, who tried to do the rest, unfortunately could not bury the puck. You love when the defense step up in the zone. I was a defenseman growing up. I absolutely love seeing that. Yeah, you could just tell he was a little gassed, and he was like, yeah, not today. <laughs> puck comes up to the blue line, a shot, and that one is into the glove of Werner. Into the glove, into the blocker. I'm not even sure how he caught that, but either way, the whistle was blown. 9.2 seconds left here in the second period. Offensive zone draw for the Saints. Lundqvist, the left winger, cheating a little bit. Mudra calling him out, saying you can't do that. Harrison loses the draw. McKendry will go off the glass out of the zone. And that will do it for the second period. A couple goals scored. you love to see it, Corey. Two quick goals for the Saints. McKendry able to respond, and that's where we sit. 3-2 heading into the intermission report. We'll get things going on the intermission report side here in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. Myself and Will Starwalt will get things going. But before we head into the intermission report, one last word, Corey. What an exciting period. That, that was a great period of hockey. Hopefully Maryville can continue that till the third. Let's see if it can happen. We'll head to intermission. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Maryville Saints hockey here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Homes. We understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes we build your way. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. Look, sport might not be the answer right now. But it teaches us this, that impossible challenges must be faced and overcome. And the reward is joy. And it will always be that way. And now that sport is back, don't waste these chances. Play with more heart, even more fire, and hope that does not end. Seek out what scares you and let your body do what it loves. Nobody knows what the future holds. Nobody knows what will come our way. So honor every breath and respect every chance. Opportunities will come and we must be ready. There's a super fun city, a quick getaway. Where there's so much excitement, you need more than a day. St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun. So much fun for your family, infinity plus a ton. It's got works of wonder, things to wow your brain. An amazing pet performance, all aboard all the trains. Some museums are historic, some hit the red blue note. Maybe catch a cards game whenever paddles your boat. Yeah, St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun. Visit us at explorestlouis.com for your chance to win a weekend of non-stop fun. A lot of the times, uh, students that are thinking about entering our program, they have a lot of questions. They've done their research. Uh, a lot of the questions that the students have are based upon outcomes. And where am I going to be four years from now if I decide to be in the Rawlings Sport Business Management Program? Here, I'll show you. Here's where our alumni work now. We have students working in the athletic department at universities. We have students working for sports teams. We have students working for sports agencies, whether it be an abstract marketing, a Learfield Sports, an IMG. Uh, those are a lot of the organizations that are hiring our students. And we do have a lot of our alumni who do work for sports teams, uh, be, whether it be uh, the Houston Rockets, um, the Kansas City Royals, the St. Louis Cardinals, St. Louis Blues. Uh, many of our students have worked for those agencies and continue to work for those types of organizations now.
Power aid. Man, if I had had this kind of power back in my day, my crossover would have been something else. I'd have broke everybody's ankle. The rare peanut vendor. My crossover would have been so crazy if you recorded it, watched it two weeks later, broke ankles. Man, that is some kind of power. Careful now. By now, you guys probably know there's a lot to see and do in St. Louis. But when it comes to the art scene, there's more here than meets the eye. From Laumeier Sculpture Park and the City Garden to the stunning Cathedral Basilica, one of the largest mosaic collections in the entire world. So if art is your thing, St. Louis is on display all year long. Ooh, now that's an exhibit. St. Lou is always exploring. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wausau Intermission Report. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Will Starwalt. Will, this second period had a lot in it compared to the first period. The first period, it was a good one. Don't get yeah. me wrong. A lot of stuff happened in the second period. We got five goals, and about four of them came within like a span of two minutes. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Uh you could see a little bit more energy from Maryville once they got that early lead. Their pressure stepped up. They looked really good, and they just kept it on from there. But then it was a lot of breakaway chances or two-on-ones going each opposite direction because both teams were playing very high pressure. So if you get an on-man rush, they took advantage of it. Absolutely, and Christian Alvagran has been fantastic today. We thought he might have the hat trick. That first goal, we thought initially – that he scored that goal by the looks of it. it looks like Cole Mudra might have buried that one. But, man, Christian Alvagran stepped up. Two goals. They looked like the same play almost. Cole Mudra, two on one. Christian Alvagran, first one, goes under the bar. Second one, didn't even leave the ice. And you had to think he tripped up Wesley Werner, who was probably thinking it was going right under the bar like the first one. Got two goals in this second period. I mean, he has looked great. He's been our player to watch for quite some time, but especially tonight, he stepped up. What did you see from him? I mean, just, just a lot of intensity. He got that first one, and he wasn't satisfied. He said, okay, last time we had a one-goal lead. Yesterday, we had a one-goal lead. And he said, that wasn't enough, so I'm going to put another one in, and I'm going to do it again. <laughs> he, he's just keeping the momentum going. He said, don't worry, guys. I, you guys can take a night off. My stick is feeling real good tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. On the other end, we have Dominic Boyley, who we've been talking about. Unfortunately, he gave up two goals in that second period, but he has looked fantastic. Everything's finding the mitt. The puck's going in his glove like a baby in his crib. It's been a fantastic showing from the freshman from Quebec, Dominic Boyle. And on the other side, Werner's playing a, a pretty good game too. Just Christian Alvagran has his number. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of two-on-ones. Like I said, a lot of two-on-ones, a lot of breakaways. Boyle saved one breakaway, and then another one got by. So if you get too many of those chances at you, one of them's going to go in. Well, it was an exciting second period. We're excited for the third. It should be a fun one. Stay tuned for more Maryville Saints hockey. They lead 3-2. We'll be right back here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. I'll start with a um, split squat and then followed by that will be a series of different kinds of jumps and movements that will try and get me get off the ground as quickly as possible. So before workouts I roll out for probably 10 minutes max. After I go through my rolling routine I'll generally go into a dynamic warm-up and then I'll head to the gym and start my workout. 
I pair hurdle hops after um, a different leg exercise, like a squat or a split squat. Um, so you get the strength part, and then after you do the strength part and you're, you're loaded with weight, you come over here and you're trying to be light on your feet and quick off the ground to, again, increase your explosiveness and speed on the ice. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree, but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it today, tomorrow, and into the future. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. Hi, I'm Ethan Mahalachek and I'm a game design major from St. Louis, Missouri. I decided on game design because it was something that knew that they were offering at Maryville. It was kind of an addition to the interactive design program and when they offered it, I hopped right on board. I've always loved video games and so um, I figured why not try to make them. The professors have helped me build up to where I'm at at the moment in a variety of ways, but one of the most important and influential, I think, has been them pushing me to take projects that I've done and push them to their limits. Here at Maryville, it's it's required as a design student that you do at least one internship. I kind of went a little bit beyond that and have done three at this point, or I'm currently in my third. I'd say my favorite part about the program is that it's still kind of small at the moment, and so that allows for a really close connection with the professors and fellow students in the classroom and a lot of involved work in the classroom. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes on, a lot of, you know, helping each other. If you're interested in game design and even more so interested in Maryville, why not stop by, take a tour, and see what we're all about. Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the third period here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Corey Madden as we're getting ready for this much-anticipated third frame. Corey, the Saints lead 3-2. Christian Alvagran having a huge day. Dominic Boyley as well. What are you seeing from this whole Maryville Saints squad tonight? They look like a different team like than what we've seen before. They look great. Yeah, they look fantastic. 
Uh, it's been a while since I got to see him play. I didn't get to catch the game last night. Uh, then before that, it was a month. It was almost a month ago, wasn't it? Pretty it cool. seems like yeah, it. It seems like forever, but, yeah, they're playing fantastic. Hopefully, Maryville can play smart here in the third. Yeah. McKendry's going to come out. They really they really need to get this win. McKendry does. So we need to play. Maryville needs to play smart. They can't end up in the box. You can't give up the lead. 3-2 game, a one-goal game. It was 3-1, to one, and McKendry responded. So McKendry, they're not having a problem responding after Maryville scores. So it's going to be interesting as the period rolls along as we got about a minute left here until the, the guys will drop the puck and get things going. But... I mean, these two teams, we've said it before, I'll say it again. These two teams do not like each other, and it showed in that second period. These games, they only get more chippier as the game progresses. And the third period is probably going to have some fireworks. I'm hoping for a couple more goals because that was very exciting. Yeah, that there's, uh, what, two, three minutes in that second period where... It was just goal scores. Yeah, it looked like any shot on net could uh, could could go in. It was, it was a couple shots, so I was like, oh, oh no. And then Dominic Boyle made the saves. So the ref stretches. They get the net all ready to go. I'm sure that thing will come loose at some point throughout the third. But Dominic Boyle leads the team out on the ice. Maryville's ready to go for the third. Jack Harrison giving the fist bumps as the captain is the last man on the ice. McKendry steps onto the ice. They're eager to get the third period going. They trail by one. 24 shots for the Saints, 22 for the Bearcats. It's a pretty even game for the most part as Maryville has the slight edge in the goal department and in the shot department. So we have 20 minutes left to go here in this game, this Saturday night tilt at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm going to predict right now this game, Corey, could be a turning point for Maryville if they can hang on because the way they're playing, if they can continue to play like this, oh my goodness, look how close they are. If they can continue to play like this, it's going to be a great rest of the year. Maryville wins the draw. Jaden Baxty takes a spill, and he did not get a stick on that pass from Matt Edgecombe. So an icing has been called, 1953, only seven seconds have passed by. So an offensive zone draw for the McKendry Bearcats as they trail by one. Portoel taking the draw for McKendry. Jaden Baxty wins it. And on the four check, Pluto goes off the side of the cage, racing after it is Stavro. He's able to come up with it. Feeds it off the skate of Prexler. It comes back to Stavro. Prexler will just chip it in. We'll get things going in on the four check. Comes around the boards. Pluto's there. He has it. Fires it up to Sokov off the stick. Boily out of his cage. Leaves it for Henson. Henson off the boards. It hops over the stick. Hits the blue line. Delayed offside. Sokov will touch it. And a whistle has been blown. 19-16 left to go here in the third period. So the third or fourth whistle already in the first 45 seconds? Yeah, it <laughs> seems like it's been the same for all the periods. A lot of quick whistles early and often in the periods. Hard to get a flow going, and then about midway through, things start to pick up. Boyley leaves the puck for Bonnet. He'll throw it around the boards. Unable to grab it is Reeder. Werner out of his cage. Alvagran's there on the four check. Goes around the boards, a big hit. No icing called. Boyley, he left it for his defense in Cole Bonnet. 
Comes out front off a stick behind the net. Alba Grand chops at it. Reader at the blue line, feeds it back down. Tack, leaves it for Mudra. Throws it out into the neutral zone. No one there for McKendry except Jacob Scrum. Cole Bonnet spins, hits the red line. Bonnet leaves it at the blue line for Karenji. Over to Harrison in the slot. Harrison, his shot goes off of a shin pad. It stays down low for Boudreau. Boudreau rubbed off against the boards. Comes back behind the net for McKendry. They go off the boards. They look to get it out. They do. Chipping it. Unable to get it by was Dembski. Going the other way. Boudreau and Karenji. The roommates. The shot on. Oh, what a save by Werner. Amaregi at the red line. Dumps it in. I was really hoping for the roommate connection there, Corey. Another two-on-one for Maryville, unable to capitalize. It remains three to two. Yeah, McKendry was McKendry was giving him that shot. They were playing the pass 100% and just couldn't squeak by the goalie. Lots of two-on-ones for the Saints tonight. A great opportunity there to make it a two-goal game. Wesley Werner came out of his cage and he, he challenged that shot. Uh, give him credit. He played that well as Boudreaux feeds it over to Gagan. Gagan a shot. That one's high. Gagan chips it. Goes off a of body. Here's Karenji on his, to his defenseman. And that is Matt Edgecombe getting the shot off. It seems like earlier in the season, Maryville wouldn't get the lucky bounces they've been getting tonight. Yeah. So that you, sometimes it's lucky bounces is what you need. It, it really does like play a huge factor in how your team responds to things. You know, they got the bounce that made them go up one nothing, and then you know they just they've had a different energy all night. I said it before. I'll probably say it once again before the night's over. As that puck goes off the glass. Down for an icing call. 17.09 left to go. We get some fresh legs out for the Saints. Alvagran, Harrison, and Mudra. These guys have been on fire tonight. Cole Mudra already making an impact on this lineup in the second game of the year. Some late changes going on here. Uh, you know, that shouldn't be able to happen because McKendry is the away team. The home team has the last change. There's some questionable things going on here tonight, Corey. Questionable indeed. Here's Mudra. He's taken down. Right at the top of the circle. Puck comes down into the corner. Both teams looking to dig it out. Mudra up top to Edgecombe, over. Here's Henson, Henson. He elects to throw it down deep. Derschel on his backhand, spins, loses the puck. Squirts off a couple bodies. That pass, unable to connect. They say no ice. What is he looking at? Henson. Bumped off the puck. Alvagran up to Harrison. Harrison over to Stavro. Stavro with speed. Tried to leave it for Harrison, unable to. McKendry going the other way with Jacob Scrum leading the charge on his forehand. He winds up a shot. A nice save by Boyley. Comes loose. Comes out into the slot. Unable to get the shot off was Adam Dembski. As it comes out of the zone, here's Prexler. Prexler on his backhand. The left side tried feeding it for Stavro. Stavro keeps the puck in the corner. Comes around the net. Prexler in on it. He's shoved. Still in the corner. Pops loose behind the net. And there's Jacob Scrum with it now. McKendry trying to get it out of the zone. They can't. Finally squeaks out of the zone. 
There's Prexler, he's shoving. As that puck goes off the boards and down for an icing. 15-17 left to go here in the third period. Still a 3-2 game. 26 shots for the Saints. 23 for the Bearcats. I was watching Prexler on that last shift, and he was having a nice battle that whole the whole shift. Thought something was going to happen. Didn't. <laughs> so... So let's see what's going on here. A penalty. Okay. Well, I spoke too soon. Somehow, some way, the referees gave Maryville a penalty. And I'm not sure what's going on here. So they're going to let the McKendry player pretty much taunt Prexler that entire shift, and then now somehow... Maryville gets the penalty kill? Yeah, uh, you know, this, and unfortunately for us up here where we're broadcasting, we don't have clear communication of what's going on on the bench and with the guys, you know, in the box. And it's for us, we don't exactly know what's happening. But what we do know is McKendry is on a power play and uh, with an opportunity to tie the game. Puck comes up to the blue line. Shot just wide. Shot on. That one goes off the post. Here's Pluto with the puck. Feeds it to the top of the blue line. Brown now a shot. That one goes off the stick and into the netting. 14.50 left to play here in the third period. About 26 seconds comes off the clock. Josh Tack, the one serving the penalty. Again, not sure what the penalty is because Tack is serving that penalty. Perhaps it was a game misconduct or... Not a game of conduct, but a... Uh, bench miner, maybe? A bench miner, yeah. Down low for scrum behind the net. Comes up top to the half wall. Reader at the blue line. Reader a shot on that one. Finds its way through, but goes wide of the cage. Dembski feeds it over. Another shot, another block. There's Jack Harrison. Who else? Battling for the puck. It comes loose. Henson will throw it down on his backhand. Henson will stay on the ice with his defense partner and Matt Edgecombe. Edgecombe elects to switch places with Cole Bonnet. He hops over the boards. Omaragi leaves it for Lundquist. We saw him score a goal tonight. Scrum leaves it. Norlander makes a move. Nice sliding play by Jaden Bexty with speed. Anthony Stavro comes the other way and holds his sauce. One into the zone. It goes off the blocker of Werner. And Scrum with the puck now. Losing his footing. Johansson. Simpson. Little reverse action as Cole Bonnet will send one down. The link of the ice. And a nice save by Werner. Radke. In his own zone. That pass is of no avail. It's shot back into the zone. Karinji in on it. Throws it to the front. And no one's there to connect with as Brad Boudreaux overskated the pass. Tried to get a stick on it. He could not. McKendry going the other way. Sokoff shot on. Saved by Boyley. Puck is chipped. Goes off of Brown's face mask. Stays in the zone. Henson on his forehand. Throws it down. Goes off the stick, so no icing. No icing. Coach Hogan screaming, as I believe everyone thought it was an icing call. Johansson leaves it. Here's Portal. His shot. Blocker side. Boily able to make the save. 12-31 left here in the third period. Maryville did a good job on that penalty kill. McKendry had some some puck movement, but they weren't able to get any really good quality shots on net. So, you know, good power our penalty kill by our uh, our Saints. More block shots for the Saints. Jack Harrison leading the charge in that department as Henson will throw it around to Edgecombe. Alvagran, he makes a man miss. Bexty taken down by Noble. 
Alva Grand in on the four check behind the net. Comes out with it on his backhand. Loses it. Comes out of the zone. It's gloved by Henson. He leaves it. But it squeaks back into the zone. And Dershel's there to go D to D inside his own blue line. Into the skates of Portal. Henson up the middle. No one's there to connect. And an icing has been called. 11.58 left to play here in the third period. Some yelling going on. The emotions are high here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Henson trying to play with the puck behind his own net. Not a good idea, he turns it over. Brown had no room, had to skate it out of his own zone. Alva Grant all over the puck. He's been a hound on the puck. Kemmer goes off the boards. With it now is Scrum. Feeds it on over. Down low, back to the front. A nice play, nice defensive play by the forward, Jake Charche. Scrum, the blue line, he'll just toss it in. That's Jacob Scrum, there's two Scrums on the team. Noah Scrum and Jacob Scrum. That pass goes all the way down for an icing. 11.02 left to go here in the third period. Well, you know, we're almost midway through the third and I'm Kind of let down how this third period is going. I thought it would be a lot more exciting than this. Hey, <laughs> we still got 11 <laughs> minutes left. You might speak too soon. Shot from the point. Oh, that one might have hit off a stick, but either way, Boily's there to make the save. 10.58 left to go. Only a couple seconds ticks off. He almost jinxed it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had that little scrum down here, Yeah. and I thought all the refs had an opportunity to keep this clean. But, I mean, you know, we'll see. Maryville wins the draw. Kemmer fans on the shot around the boards, but he blocks that shot. Looks like he took it down low as he winces over. That pass, back door, hits off a stick. Going the other way, Prexler. Sauce pass, oh, a little too far for Charche. McKendry will exit their zone as Scrum tries to make a one-on-one -on -one move against Phil Kemmer, unable to get by Kemmer. Delayed off sides. Prexler with the puck at the red line. Puck squeaks into the zone. Prexler lo lost it, though. Richardson feeds it up. Here's Johansson. He passes it over to Noble. Noble on his forehand. Goes behind the net, hits off a stick, off the glass, up top to the blue line, shot on. Oh, a redirect. Boily able to get a pad on it. Kept in. It was a good play by Wickham to keep the puck in the zone. Tack on his forehand, his pass. No icing. Lots of icings that have been called off as McKendry reverses the puck. They exit the zone, there's Noble. Noble, stick handles, throws one towards the front of the net. And going in is Johansson. Looks like he got a piece of Dominic Boyley's helmet and then just skates away. Yep, well, can't say it surprised me, honestly. Well, you can't, here's the thing. I, I love when players go hard to the net. You want that. You want a player going hard to the net, looking for a rebound. But at some point, you, you can't you can't knock the goalie over. You can't touch the goalie. You can't bump him on the head as there's a shot. And there's a rebound going down. It goes wide. That was Dembski who had a chance in the slot on that rebound. Stavro tries to knock it out of the zone. He can't. It's kept in. Here's Dembski to the backhand. Loses the handle, throws one to the front of the net. It goes off the side of the cage. Nine minutes left to go here in the third period. Stavro can't connect with the pass. 
It's kept in. Stavro finally pushes it forward. Here's Karenji with Stavro. Karenji stops, looks, surveys the ice, drops it for Henson. He loses the puck. He jumped over his stick. He'll throw it back down low. Karenji looks pretty gassed on that last shift. His, he just got off the ice. Here's Sokoff now, an opportunity. And the slot a shot on. Oh, it goes off the post. Shane Pluto. A grade A opportunity for the McKendry Bearcats. And Pluto rang one off the bar. Kemmer on his backhand. Throws it around to Edgecombe. Edgecombe unable to get it out. It hits off of Pluto. Still behind the net. McKendry feeds one up top. Norlander over to his defense partner. A shot on. That one goes just high and wide of the cage. Nordlander pinches in. It's pinned up against the boards. Nordlander tries to get one towards the front of the net. Kemmer's there to throw it around. It's kept in by Brown. Goes around the opposite direction. Edgecombe pinned up against the boards. He's battling for it. Gagan throws it back the other way. Wickham's there to keep it in. Shot on. That one's off the stick and out of play, which is huge for Maryville as they needed to get those guys off the ice. They looked like they were getting a little tired, so get some fresh legs out on the ice. Both teams, two wholesale changes with 7.35 left to play. Still a 3-2 game. Maryville leads. I think my heart skipped a beat on that one. Hit the post. Scared yeah. me a little bit. Well, a couple posts, and there was one earlier in this period as well. Scrum keeps it in. Back forward is Bonnet. He stops, uses the net, feeds one to Boudreaux. Boudreaux lifting the stick of Scrum. Coming out with it is Jack Harrison. Harrison taken down. Penalty being called. And Maryville will head to the power play with 7-17 left here in the third period. A huge opportunity to make it a two-goal game and try and tack on this lead. One thing Maryville has to pay attention to is that McKendry, even though they're going to be on the penalty kill, they tend to send a cherry picker. I watched it on the last penalty kill. They still will throw offense, a complete offensive zone. They'll, they'll go all out. So I, I, Maryville's got to be careful here. Maryville wins the draw, comes up top to Henson at the blue line. Feeds it on over to Prexler. Prexler back down low for Bexty. Fakes the drop pass up top to Henson. A shot on. That's into the glove of Werner. 7.05 left here in the third period. 149 remains on the Maryville power play. Especially with the game starting to dwindle down. You know, the time is not of, you know, it's not McKendry's friend, friend at this point. You know, they might throw a guy up there. Who knows? Henson over to Prexler. Prexler down low to Bexty. Bexty cycles with Harrison. Harrison back over to Prexler. Prexler back down for Harrison. Back up to Prexler on the half wall. Up top to Henson. Back to Prexler. Prexler on the half wall. He looks. He shoots. Keeps it on the ice. And it might have hit off a stick because it went over the net. And into the netting. 6.42 left to go here in the third period. Harrison wins the draw. He kicks it back. Prexler on the half wall. He shoots. And that one is into the stomach of Werner. Another save for Wesley Werner. He only gave up one goal in last night's game. He's given up three tonight. This first power play unit still out there for the Saints. They win the draw once again. Henson back over to Bexty. Feeds it down low for Prexler. Prexler behind the net. That pass out front went off of a, a shin pad. Goes back behind the net. Comes up top to Henson. Henson the shot. Redirected. It's loose. Back to Henson. He's bumped off the puck. McKendry unable to get the puck out of the zone. Stavro with it on the half wall. On the right side up top to Henson. Back to Stavro. Stavro. On his backhand, throws it to Henson off of his shin pad. Back to Stavro on the half wall. Goes across the ice to Bexty. Hits off a stick. It's kept in the zone. Bexty able to throw it back into the zone, but looks like that'll do it for that unit 
in their opportunity on the power play as McKendry threw it back down the ice. Christian Alvagran now out on the ice. He wheels around the zone, throws it down low for Boudreaux. 20 seconds left on the power play. Up top to Bonnet. Bonnet at the blue line, shot on, he scores! On his knee to celebrate Cole Bonnet on the power play, 4-2 Maryville. They extend their lead and a big goal coming at a big time for the Maryville defenseman. I'm not sure if that hit um, McKendry player and bounced in. It didn't look like it went straight in the net to me. I I agree, it looked like it got redirected. I'm not sure if it hit off uh, another Saint. I'm going to say that by the reaction of Cole Bonnet, I don't believe it did. Because if someone else got a, got a piece of that, you have to think that they would have equally <laughs> went down on one knee and celebrated because they were that fired up. That's a huge goal for the Saints. Regardless, whoever you ask, they're not gonna they're not gonna say they care because at the end of the day, it's 4-2. 5.28 left to go here in the third period. Let's see if the Saints can hang on to split the weekend series, a home and home, as they are seeking revenge, and currently they have it so far. 5.20 left to go here in the third period. Buck down in the Maryville zone. It's picked off by Alvagran. Alvagran on his backhand with speed. He opens up, stops. He'll leave it for Joey Gagan. Gagan, he'll stop behind the net. Racing after it, Cole Mudra. Mudra getting held up, pokes it up top to Cole Bonnet. We saw him rip one earlier, not too long ago. Tack now a shot, the rebound! He scores for the hat trick! Christian Alvagrand! What a game for number 14, Christian Alvagrand. That's his third goal of the game. He's been a part of four of these tonight. What a game for Christian Alvagrand. And my goodness, have we been spot on tonight with our players of the game or players to watch, but I mean, you might as well call him the player of the game at this point. 5-2 Maryville leads. He has been everywhere tonight. Uh, even on that fit, even on the fourth goal, he was in front of the net. He might not have got a point on that play, but still a huge, he's been a huge presence. Puck squirts out into the neutral zone. Nordlander will flip one in. Going off the glass was Simpson. He comes up to the neutral zone. Radke inside the blue line. He's taken down. He loses a glove. He'll skate back to the bench. As that shot goes just wide, Brad Boudreaux will just flip it out of the zone off the boards. A couple new bodies come onto the ice. Puck comes to the red line as Brown enters into the zone, tries to make a move, can't get past Phil Kemmer. No one's getting past Phil Kemmer tonight. With it now, Kyle Dunville. It's important to note that for the most part, you know, Maryville has tried to keep Alvagran and and Mudra together. We've seen Gagan and and Jack Harrison going in, you know, play on the you know the centerman because you know, people might forget Maryville's playing with eleven forwards tonight. We mentioned that at the beginning of the broadcast. Is that just shot on and stuffing at it? Is it in the back of the net? Some of the Bearcats are claiming it went in, but Boily has it in his glove right now. 3.30 left to play here in the third period. A timeout has been called. Lots of chirping going on. And you had to expect it, especially this game, sort of getting out of hand at this point. Maryville has a nice cushion with 3.30 left to play. Shots are dead even at 32. Maryville can't get comfortable. 
That is very true. There's three minutes and 30 seconds left. Very true. And we seen McKendry turn around and score a goal like 10 seconds after we did. Our Maryville did. So yeah. we can't get comfortable. we got to keep our head. Got, Maryville's got to keep their head in the game. Absolutely. And, you know, a timeout being taken. This is a good refresh moment for both teams, really, but, but for Maryville as, you know, they're looking to – get some fresh legs out there and make sure that they are defensively sound because like you said, Corey, eh, this McKendry team could easily put the puck in the back of the net three times. And the way Dominic Boyley's playing, that might be a little bit harder to do, but for the most part, anything's possible. We've seen it before. But right now, what the Saints have to do is just get the puck out of their zone, make sure they're clean, Exits out of the zone and no turnovers right inside their blue line. So five on five for now. We'll watch and see if Warner will be pulled. They are down three, so we'll find out if anything changes. You'd have to think that McKendry was drawn a play up just in case. As the puck comes around the board, it's pinned up in the corner. Bonnet comes out with it. He goes around the net. He'll throw it off the glass. It's kept in. It stays in, right at the blue line, shot on, sticked away into the corner. Big hit by Jack Harrison into the corner. Noble feeds it up top to the blue line to Dershel. Dershel's shot. His attempt goes off a of body into the corner as it rims around the net. 2.51 left to go here in the third period. Maryville exits the zone. Christian Alvagran now. Comes out of the zone. Henson at the red line. He'll just dump it back in deep. 2.30 left here to go in regulation. McKendry right inside their own blue line. They hit the red. Sokoff with the puck trying to go end to end. He takes a tumble. Tries to slap one on. He can't. Sokoff on the half wall. Joey Gagan feeds it to Stavro. He has Bexty trailing. Stavro to Bexty. Bexty back door. It's loose. A rebound. Coming out with it are the Bearcats. Shane Pluto spins off. As he'll just throw it out of the zone. Simpson's there. 145 left to play in regulation. Henson at the blue line, fires one on. Warner with the save. Doesn't look like Warner is going to be coming out of the net for the extra attacker as Maryville will settle things down and just play pitch and catch in their own zone, taking some time off of the clock. That pass off of a skate going the other way. McKendry, Amaregi, shot on, toe save by Dominic Boyley. Amaregi. Using his big body behind the net. Wheels around the cage. That pass goes off a stick and going the other way. Cole Mudra with Damian Karenji and Anthony Stavro. Karenji for Mudra. Shot on. That one's just wide. The quick shot by Mudra went just wide of the cage. Less than a minute to go in the period. And there it is. There's the fist of cuffs that we thought would come earlier in the third period. But a 5-2 game. This one's almost all but over for the most part unless a miracle happens for the McKendry Bearcats. But there's Karenji swinging, and he's got to be smart. He is one of the top players on this Maryville team. He, they can't afford to have him miss a game due to a fight. No, no, not at all. This game's over. He needs to just skate away and uh, let McKendry be McKendry. So both players will exit the ice, as that is Scrum, Noah Scrum. So we have 50 seconds left to go here in this game. McKendry, if they were trying to pull the goalie, they have absolutely had no offensive zone pressure whatsoever to even attempt to get the goalie off of the ice to get that sixth man on. And they have 50 seconds to score three goals if they want to tie this game. Penalties assessed. 
We'll see if it remains five on five. It looks like it's going to be four on four, so that makes things a little bit more interesting, Corey. The ice opens up. Warner at the top of his crease. Might be thinking going to the bench. We'll see what happens. Bexty's there. Keeps the puck in the zone. He'll just skate away. As McKendry throws it up, Johansson at the red line. Enters into the blue. Behind the net. Werner is staying in his net. 30 seconds left to go. So it looks like McKendry will just play this one out. Tack makes a nifty move behind his own cage. Bonnet's going to settle things down in his own zone. Behind his net. 10 seconds left to play. Bexty throws it. Little area pass for Jack Harrison who will chip it into the zone with three seconds left to play. And that will do it. A Saturday night win for the Saints. They take this one five to two over their rival, the McKendree Bearcats, and split this weekend series. A huge game for the Saints, and they get back to 500 with a five and five record. Well, Corey, a big win for the Saints, and we're going to talk all about it when we return. So don't go anywhere. We're going to wrap things up here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. A final score, 5-2 Maryville wins. Be right back here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I've always wanted to go back to school, but getting a degree feels complicated now. I don't know if I can fit into my life like I did before. And I think about all the new jobs out there. Everything's moving so fast. I need a degree with my time and money. And I'm ready for the next step and to make sacrifices. But I want a university that believes in me the way that I do. Here at Maryville University, we stand for those who are brave. We've been bravely revolutionizing higher education for those striving to achieve for nearly 150 years. We're developing degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. Now, we're bringing this high quality education online so you can study anywhere at any time. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Saints win tonight by a final score. As you can see, 5-2, to two, a big win for the Saints. And, Corey, this was a complete different Saints team that we've seen from basically the first half of the year. They looked incredible tonight. Yeah, they played outstanding. Uh, strong three periods of hockey. Uh, they seemed to, in the past, not be able to put together a full three periods, and tonight they did that. So, great, great game. Absolutely, and, you know, things got a little slow in the first period. We, we were wondering, like, when is when's the pace going to pick up? We... We knew that Maryville came out with a jump, but it got slowed down from that power play that McKendry had. But my goodness, the second period was full of entertainment if you like watching people score goals. Christian Alvagran had a huge game for the Saints. We touched on it before the game started. We touched on it during the game. I mean, how could you not? He played outstanding today, had the hat trick, could have had the fourth goal. At the end of the day, he actually might have had the fourth goal. It depends on how they put it in the stat sheet. But Cole Mudra got that one. But at the end of the day, great game from him. And that was our player to watch. And Corey, was he our player of the game? Uh, yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and, and uh, make him our player of the game. Um, <laughs> he, three goals, maybe four, five point, four points in the night. And then the, the fourth goal, he was in front of the net. He didn't get a point, obviously. But he, he was screening the goalie and, uh, you know, Cole Bonnet got the goal. So he was all over, played a great 200-foot game. Offense showed up, obviously, but he, you know, he made some defensive plays also. Absolutely, and this was a huge win because, like we mentioned throughout the broadcast, the MCH Conference Tournament was canceled. So whoever ranks the highest in the ACHA standings by the end of the year, about midway through March, that team will head to the National Tournament, which will be hosted by yours truly here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. So we'd love to see if the Saints were in that tournament, and this win today helps that on their road to the national tournament. So final score, 5-2. to two. 
For myself, I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Corey Madden, Will Starwalt, and everyone involved here with the team, the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We thank you for tuning in today, and make sure to stick around for the postgame show on another stream. We'll be back with more Maryville Saints hockey in the future, so thank you for tuning in. Saints win 5-2. Everyone, have a great night. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.